Hi everyone, and welcome to today's session. In today's demo, we're going to take a look at the MEND repository integration, specifically with Bitbucket Cloud. In terms of the agenda, we're going to install MEND into Bitbucket Cloud, define centralized configuration for onboarding and settings that MEND provide. This will take a look at how we can adopt repositories at scale. We'll also take a look at in-context feedback for developers. So whether they're committing code into a feature branch or into a hotfix, we'll take a look at how men can add comments to tell them if an outdated, vulnerable component has been introduced, or maybe even a high-risk license like a GPL. Next, we'll take a look at some of the issue tracking integrations. So men can automatically create issues based on the same alerts, so the security team can review and track these over time. Finally, we'll take a look at where men can add significant value around automatic remediation. This is around creating pull requests to automatically upgrade either outdated or vulnerable open source components. So join me today. I'm Luke Brogan, the sales engineering team lead here at MEND. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Where I'm signed into my MEND organization, called MEND Bitbucket Cloud. This organization is specifically created to scan only my Bitbucket Cloud repositories, so I can see them all within one single view. You can then create additional organizations, whether that be for pipeline or other integrations. Here, you can see I've imported the demo product. Just to show some example data and analytics, which the MEND platform provides on screen. In my second tab, I've got my Bitbucket Cloud environment. And currently, we don't have any repositories or projects. So let's go ahead and create a repository. So there's a number of ways which we can onboard uh, repositories in the repo configurations. So this is going to be a global repository configuration. This means we centrally define the config file and the scope of adoption. There are other ways to onboard MEND through pull requests, one by one in terms of each repository, but this is a, certainly the best way to scale MEND in your repository. So here, we just want to write white source config as the repository name. This has to be uh, absolute. So make sure you type it in as you see on screen. We're going to use the white source config project. Keep this as a private registry. And we're not going to include the .gignore file. Let's go ahead and get this created. So as we expect, we now have a blank repository. We'll come back in a few moments time to see MEND has automatically populated the config files here. But next, what we need to do is import a vulnerable project, one we can scan and create data. So let's go to the crate at the top, click on repository. And in the top right, we can go ahead and import a repository. In my third tab, I'm going to use NodeGoat as that example application. It's a great test to scan a vulnerable Node.js and JavaScript application. So let's just go ahead and copy the URL at the top, go back to Bitbucket, paste in the URL. I'm going to call this uh, NodeGo as the project and repository name. We keep this private, go ahead and click on import. Bitbucket Cloud will then clone the github.com repository and bring it into my tenant. Once this is completed, you will then see all of the files and repository for NodeGo on screen. One important thing here is you'll notice in a few moments time, there won't be any MEND configuration files in the repository. What we're going to do is a silent onboard process. So it can scan in the background and give developers feedback within context of their commit, pull requests or the branch protection and automatic remediation, which the platform provides. 
Next, I just want to go to my repository settings for NodeGo, scroll down and enable the issue tracker. So you can use the issue tracker natively within Bitbucket, which we're going to enable here privately, or we could use the other solution by Atlassian, which is Jira. So we of course have integrations into both solutions, but for now I'm just going to use the local issue tracker software. Go ahead and click save, and we can go back home at this point. Now we want to integrate the MEND application into Bitbucket. So go to the MEND UI, click on integrate in the top right, scroll down, expand developer integrations, expand MEND for Bitbucket Cloud, and click on the install link as shown below. This will take you to the Atlassian Marketplace where we can go ahead and get the application in the top right. We'll then redirect back to our tenant where we can go ahead and click add in the top right. From here, we then just need to grant MEND access to the repositories in Bitbucket Cloud. From here, we just need to authenticate the product using the license key. So to get that, just head back to the MEND UI, click on generate license key, copy that value and paste it into this area here. Once that's completed, you're then redirected back to the home page where MEND has then been integrated into Bitbucket Cloud. So what we need to do now is head back to the white source config repository and take a look at the files which have already been deployed in this once was empty repository. You can see there's an easy readme file which just explains the two config file options. But let's go ahead and make some small changes. So click on the global config.json and click edit. As I mentioned earlier, there's a couple of ways to onboard repositories of MEND. We can create an onboarding pull request per repository, which is in scope. We can automatically push down the config file. Or third and finally, the most common option is actually to include no white source file, which means we will scan an onboard with no additional files in the target repository. Of course, if you want to have an include or exclude list, make sure you populate this parameter shown here. But for now, I'm just going to do a silent onboarding for all of my repositories. So just be aware that here with this setting, we will scan all of the repositories silently, but that's okay because I only have one example in this tenant. So we'll go ahead and just commit that change. We can now go back to the source view in the top left. And we just want to make one more change to the repo config.json. So in the previous file, we defined the scope and the onboarding process. And in this final, final file here, we're just going to define the repository settings which are available. So I want to make a few changes. So we click edit. And what I'm going to do is just paste in my new values and just explain what's been added. First of all, I've turned on license violations so we can proactively block GPLs through policy within MEND. I've also automatically created issues based on uh, the dependency issue type and low severity being the trigger. I've included merge confidence to tell me about the adoption rates and how successful my upgrade paths are when men create the pull requests for automated remediation. And finally, I've enabled workflow rules. So men will automatically generate those fixed pull requests based on any CVE being low or higher. So there are some of the default values which I've changed here. We can go ahead and click commit on that. We can go back home and then we can head into the node go repository. If 
from here, I just want to make a small change to the package.json file as we're using NPM as a dependency package manager. So let's go ahead and click edit. And I would just like to add a new vulnerable component to our dependency list. So on line 23 by underscore, I'm just going to add load dash 393. We'll go ahead and commit this. And straight away, MEND will detect this as a valid commit, as we've had a change in a package manifest file or um, any other valid file which is supported within MEND. And in a few moments' time, we'll see that scan has been initiated, and we'll get the results directly within the commit. So just refreshing that page, we can see the MEND security check is currently running on the repository. So we'll check back in a few moments and see the results of the scan. So just refreshing the page, we can now see the check runs have completed. And we've detected 49 vulnerabilities. So we can see the CVEs, uh, the scoring and severity, the affected library, and most importantly, the remediated fix, the upgrade uh, to that open source component. So this was a vulnerable application by design, so lots of uh, data which has been discovered. And we scanned a total of 381 libraries here. Finally, we enabled license check. So here we can see there was no violations to the licensing policy, which is set to proactively block GPLs. Finally, on the right-hand side here, we can see the issues which have been created for each component. So if we go to the issue tracker on the left-hand side, we can see there's only eight issues been created because by default, we're only raising issues based on direct dependencies, which you're in control of within your application. What we've done is smartly group transitive dependencies with their direct counterparts. So load dash was added earlier, 393, that is a known vulnerable component. There are seven vulnerabilities which exist for that component. If we take a look at Helmet, for example, we can click on this. And there's three transitive vulnerabilities which belong to Helmet 230. And luckily, there's remediation which is available. So we can upgrade Helmet to remediate these transitive issues. If you're interested, you can scroll down and read much more around the scoring description and path to the vulnerable library and dependency. Finally, if we go to the pull request area, we can take a look at the pull request which MENS created in order to upgrade those vulnerable or outdated dependencies. So we talked about Helmet. Let's take a look at the Helmet PR. Here we're moving from version 2 to version 3. Here, there is merge confidence data to show you the age and the adoption rates, whether they're passing and the overall confidence level, just to check if there's any further due diligence which may be required. So contextualized upgrade paths are provided within MEND. So that's a little dive into the value which is provided within Bitbucket Cloud. And just to wrap up the demonstration, if we go back to the SCA dashboard within MEND, you can see a new product has been created, Bitbucket Cloud underscore NodeGoat, which is the name of the repository. And here we have all of those rich analytics and uh, reports which are available within the dashboard today. So we have the SBOM of 381 components. We can see all of the licenses were quite healthy. There was no GPLs there. And we can dive down into the individual vulnerabilities or vulnerable libraries. I hope you've enjoyed this session. If you need any more information or support, please check out docs.men.io. Cheers, everyone.